Hey guys, I'm out in the backyard vineyard next to this big, beautiful rose bush. And a lot of people ask me, is there a purpose for the roses? Why do you have rose bushes at the end of each vineyard row? And this goes back really pretty far, probably back to the mid 1800s where people started to plant roses at the end of their vineyards. And I've heard a few different theories as to why. I'm not sure if it's 100% known. One theory, which I'd don't think is correct is some people would say well when these vineyards were plowed by horses the presence of this rose bush at the end this big prickly thing with vibrant red obvious roses on it would tell the horse not to turn until it got past the rose bush so it wouldn't rip this last vine out of the row in the process of turning well first of all i don't think a horse really is going to care that much about this running this rose bush over also, if it did turn past the rose, it's only gonna rip the rose bush out. And if there wasn't a rose bush, the plow's just gonna hit off of this end post anyways. I don't think it's necessarily gonna rip this last um, vine out. So I don't really know how much water that theory really holds, but the more likely case is sometime around the, the mid 1800s, we started trading vines with Europe. Europe started trading vines with the United States. And we all sort of traded the pests and diseases that go with those vines. And of course, powdery mildew being a common pest of the United States, when it went to these European vines that hadn't co-evolved with, um, with that mildew, they just couldn't handle it. It basically really beat up on these vines. So there's a lot of effort going into how to deal with that. And one thing they found was spraying sulfur was pretty effective at preventing um, powdery mildew but then they kind of probably wanted to know you know when is it a good time to spray sulfur we don't want to just spray and spray and spray for no good reason one that's going to cost a lot of money and at, the, at that time i think they had some concerns with the sulfur you know it can be kind of smelly is that going to affect the wines so we don't want to spray more sulfur than we need to spray well rose bushes they grow in happily in similar conditions as grapevines, but they also get powdery mildew really easily, which um, you could say for most roses, it's actually gonna get powdery mildew quicker than the grapevine. So the thought was, you see the powdery mildew on the roses, you know it's time to spray the grapes. Now, I think that might, be, might have been somewhat effective, but I'm not sure that it was really that effective because usually by the time you actually see the powdery mildew, it's everywhere. And sulfur is much better at preventing powdery mildew than it is at actually curing powdery mildew. The reason I have roses really has nothing to do with that. One, it's really just because there is some historic value. It's kind of cool. Um, it certainly looks really nice. Of course, this rose is a little bit maybe overgrown. Um, but these roses, they don't get mildew bad at all. These are your modern hybrid roses. These ones are called double knockout roses, which are awesome roses. They bloom almost all year round and they don't get diseases like a normal rose would. So it's really not effective at all at telling me when it's time to spray these vines. You'll probably not really see any vineyards using these for any sort of effective purpose other than it you know, give somebody a reason to drive up to their vineyard and say, wow, what are those roses for? And then maybe stop into their tasting room and buy a few bottles of wine. If you have any other theories beyond these, please mention in the comments, because I think there are a lot of weird theories with by far the most prevalent theory being the um, powdery mildew, canary in the coal mine theory as to why um, in Europe they really started planting a lot of roses at the end of vineyard rows in the, uh, the mid 1800s.